Yo, what is going on everyone? It is your favorite trader, the Master Coin. And guys, today we are back with a powerful video, highly requested, and we're speaking about order blocks. Everything you need to know about these candles in the market. You see, guys, these candles are the absolute basis and foundation of our trading strategy. You see, when we're looking at the market, we always want to be aware of where these order blocks are and what is happening after these order blocks are created so that we can A, manage our trades correctly and B, get in the correct trades. First things first, what is an order block? You see, an order block is a simple candlestick formation you're going to see on the chart and it's simply going to look something like this. Now, guys, before we do get into the video, I do want you guys to understand if you want to know exactly how to use these, how to incorporate these in your trading, um, feel free to contact me on my Instagram below. Um, you can see it down here, instagram.com forward slash IK Davis. This is my only account. And what you can do is you can contact me regarding our mentorship program. And obviously, we can see exactly how to put these together and really take it to that next level. So if you're looking to get funded, you're looking to take your trading to the next level, definitely reach out. This is my only Instagram links in the description. When it comes to order blocks, you're going to see three different types. Your first type is what we would call your traditional order block, where you have a down candle that leads to an up move, right? So you may see a bearish candle in the market followed by a significant up move. Now, the most important part about this is how you trade it. You see, we're not trying to predict when this order block is going to occur. We wait to see this in the market because this is a footprint of a larger institution getting involved. You know, you've got to realize, guys, when you're seeing these candlesticks form, this is a footprint of a bigger bank, of a bigger institution. So what we do is we wait for this to form. We wait for this to create a new structure in the market, cause and effect, right? This has this this is the cause and the effect must lead to something substantial, i.e. a new breaker structure. Once we see this down candle before the up move, what we can do to trade this mark up on this order block, right? Again, the last down candle that leads to the up move, we can put our proximal line on the open or the wick, right? Whatever the high of the candle is, we can put our proximal line on there. And the reason it's called a proximal line is because this is the proximity of our order block. And this is where demand is gonna be sitting in the market, buy orders. You see what's happened, the reason these order blocks work is we have trapped money in this area. Institutions, larger players, they have to firstly hedge themselves in, right? They're trading with so much capital. Again, you look at it, right? JP Morgan, Barclays Bank, Duchess Bank. These guys are trading trillions of dollars every day. So they can't just come in the market and fulfill orders like we do because, you know, that's going to move the market. And again, if that moves the market, they're going to get fined because they're rigging the market. And that's a whole nother combo for another day. But what I want you to understand now is we mark up this proximal line here. We then mark up our distal line, which is the bottom of the order block. And our distal line is basically our invalidation point. Our stop loss can go just below this distal line because if this distal line, if this lower line gets invalidated, if this gets broken, our order block is no longer valid. And we can finally place another line on the halfway point of this order block. So how we trade this is we wait for this to form, we wait for a new high to follow after, and then we wait for price to trade back in to this order block. What we can do then is we can place one entry on the open, stop loss again, just below the distal, and we can target again, you know, new highs, etc. We can also place another entry on the 50%, Again, stop loss just below the distal line. And the reason we can enter at both of these areas is sometimes price will not react off the open and will react off the 50%. And the reason it's the 50% is because on other time frames, you know, there may be imbalances inside of here. You know, there may be other you know reasons for price to come lower, but other orders will be sitting in this area. So not all of the you know demand will be sitting at the high. Sometimes demand will be sitting in the middle of the of the range. So price can dip a little bit lower. So what we can do is we can take advantage of this by splitting our risk amongst two of these trades. Now, what do I mean by splitting your risk? If you're already going to risk 1%, $100 of your account, don't come in and risk $100, $100 on each of these. No, that's wrong. Because if that's 1% of your account and this order block isn't valid, maybe you've, in that, maybe you've you know analyzed the chart incorrectly and it stops you out, well, that's now going to be a 2% loss, a $200 loss. So take this $100, split it into two $50 positions. Again, calculate your lot size. If you haven't seen the lot size calculating video, definitely watch that. And then place one entry for $50 on the open and one entry for $50 on the 50%, splitting your risk. So if this order block doesn't hold, and again, you analyze the chart wrong, and again, it's okay to be wrong, but we've managed our risk and we're only gonna risk a total of $100 if this doesn't play out. 
But more times than not, if you see these order blocks in the charts, they are going to play out. Um, and the reason for that is very, very simple. You're seeing big money get in. Like the only reason the market can move, the only reason the market will go higher and create these order blocks is because you're seeing demand and at the market. This is the footprint of how buy orders are fulfilled in the market. So this is going to be that down candle before the up move. And that's how we trade it. And we also have another type of bullish order block. Now, this is very similar to the first one, but instead of a down candle before the up move, you're going to see price manifest like this. You'll see a drop. Price will create a base with a series of dojis and then create another rally. So it's a drop base rally formation like this. And what we do is we look at the base. Right? So this, you know, these dojis in the middle, again, mark up our proximal line, the open, our distal line just below. And again, the distal line is where your stop loss goes and this is your invalidation. And also another line on halfway. So you can obviously get that you know, medium entry. How do you trade this? Same way as before. Stop loss just below the distal. Entry one on your proximal. And then entry two on your you know, medium halfway point. And again, that's going to give you your entry for buys, right? Again, you wait for this to form. You wait for price to retrace back into this area. You take your buys to target you know, future areas. Your final bullish order block. What you're going to see is a rally, so a bullish impulse in price. You'll then see price create a base, so you'll see it create, you know, some sort of doji sticks. And then you'll have another continuation to the upside and creating this rally base rally. When you see this rally base rally, this is demand entering higher in the leg. And demand can enter, buy orders can enter mid-range. So with these, I must warn you, these are continuation plays. These can be a little less probable. Um, the advanced level is, you know, being able to trade this whilst it's forming, but that's a combo for another day. But what you can do with this is the same thing, right? You see this rally base rally. You can mark up your proximal, the open of the dojis, your di your halfway point for your second entry. And again, your distal line, which is going to be your invalidation point just below the low. And again, how you can trade this again is simply waiting for price to come down, tap it, and obviously go higher again, right? Again, you can split your entries from the open and the 50%. Guys, there's a million different names for these different order blocks. People call it everything. The, the name doesn't matter. What you got to understand is the concept behind the chart. As long as you understand the concept behind the chart, you can call this anything. Yo, you can call this iPhone. You can call this dog's bollocks if you want to. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you call it. The main thing is being able to understand it and know how to trade it correctly. So you can also have bearish scenarios. So you see an up candle before a down move where you see, you know, this bullish candle followed by a down move just like this. And again, how do you trade it? Again, you wait for price to return back to your order block. And again, you mark up your proximal line, which is the open. You mark up your distal line, which is just above the high. Well, technically the distal line is the exact high of it. But the reason I like to mark it just above is because that's where my stop loss goes. And we can finally mark up our halfway point as well so that we can have an entry um, there. Now, again, sometimes it will look larger. And what you want to do is you want to find the most voluminous institutional candle. And by switching time frames, you're going to see these order blocks manifest in different shapes and formations. But the key is to find the largest, most voluminous one because that's you know, the biggest move. And the reason we look for the biggest move and the biggest one is because it takes money to move the market, right? It costs over a billion dollars to move Euro USD by one pip. So when you're seeing these order blocks, sometimes 10 pips, 20 pips, 50 pips, 100 pips, whatever, the larger the order block, the more powerful it is because there's intention behind the move, right? A look, if you're a bank, right, are you going to come in the market and spend, you know, what, $200 billion moving the candlestick for a couple minutes or hours to do nothing after that? Of course not. You're going to move it with purpose. You're going to move it with intention. So when you're seeing these, make sure you're looking for the largest voluminous one by switching timeframes. What you can do is you can use custom time frames. So if you press the comma on your keyboard, you can change time intervals. And sometimes we'll sit there and go from five minute to 10 minute to 20 minute to 19 minute, right? To 18 minute to 108. Again, just to find the largest voluminous one and what is the cleanest. Ultimately, if it's not clean, just change the screen. We're also going to have another formation where instead of just having an up candle before the down move, what we may see is a rally base and a drop. So price creates a rally base and a drop and again we trade this the same way proximal line distal line just above the high proximal um, obviously at the open and then another you know midway point for your second entry and the key is cause and effect the key is what does this order block do the reason a lot of you are losing your order block trades is you don't know what what the hell you're looking for you're just seeing oh this is an order block so it has to be valid it may work out a few times 
but over a big enough sample size of trades, and that's what trading's about. It's not on a trade by trade basis. It's over a big enough sample size of trades. It's making sure your edge is going to play out like a casino, right? A casino every single day. They understand that they're going to lose some days, but over a month, week, year, they know they're going to be profitable because they're a business at the end of the day. And you have to treat your trading like a business. Now, when you're selling, you always want to add a couple extra pips um, for your stop loss. Why? Well, how many pips? Because your spread, right? Spread can stop you out more aggressively and without actually hitting your stop loss based on the bid and ask price. Now, I may do a whole video on this later, but essentially just add, go on your MetaTrader 4, see what your spread is and add that spread to your lot size. So if your spread, for example, is two pips and your stop loss is here, price may come, you know, two pips below. And because your spread's two pips, based on your bid and ask price, it's going to hit your stop loss and actual market may still drop. But because of the spread, it can take you out. Now, this only occurs for sell positions. So make sure that you're, you know, you're adding that on um, for your sales. For buyers, it's okay. And the final bearish order block is instead of, you know, a rally base drop or that up candle before the down move, you're going to see price drop, create a base and then create another drop. And again, this is a continuation play, a little bit less probable. Um, you may want to wait for more confirmations, which again, you can reach out, ask for a mentorship and we can get into that. But again, how you trade this same way, proximal line, median line, distal line, and then again, wait for price to return and you know, you can short it and take price lower. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Of course, I'm going to show you some examples of how these do work. Now, the cool thing is, guys, again, you can trade this on any single time frame. It doesn't matter. But what do we see, right? We can see here we have our up candle that leads to a significant down move. We can also see we had the liquidity capture as well, which is very fantastic. We mark up our proximal. We can use the wicks. We then mark up our distal, which is just above the high as our invalidation point, because if this area, you know, gets taken out, the whole order block is invalid. Then we can also mark up our median point, which is halfway. Now, sometimes your median point may not get triggered and it's okay. But how you trade this is you simply wait for price to return to this order block. Your stops can go above the high and obviously we can target new areas. So let's see how price reacts to this bearish order block. Price comes in, triggers us, and we can see a very, very aggressive push to the downside from this. And the reason why we're seeing such an aggressive push is because this is an area where supply is sitting, right? These are supply zones. These are areas where institutions are involved. A bullish example. So what do we see here? We can see our down candle that leads to our up move. This is why we look for the most voluminous one, because look, in this scenario, we can see a large voluminous institutional candle here, where we can mark up our proximal, mark up our distal, our invalidation, and also mark up our intermediate. You know, now, if we would have used this second smaller one here, right, what would have happened is we would have got stopped out, right? Watch what happens next. You see, if we was using this smaller one, we would, the price would have stopped us out with this wick, and then you're like, oh my God, I'm angry, and then obviously from there, price creates a new high in the market. This is why it's important, guys, to make sure you're choosing the right order blocks and you're going for the most voluminous institutional candles that you can see. Let's look at the second example. And this example is going to be that drop base rally formation. OK, so what we can see here and again, this is also similar to the prior example, but we can see we had a drop in price, a base, then a new rally in price. So we can use this base as our area of demand marking up our proxal, marking up our distals and validation, and also marking up a median point for another entry and watch what happens next. We wait patiently for price to return to this area. Boom, there's your entry. And again, what happens next? And again, this is Bitcoin guys, the most random asset class in the world, the most unpredictable asset class. And then from here, we can see we have a very nice reaction and you do want to see fast reactions from these candles. You don't want to see price lingering. Um, again, because the whole premise of these candles is that you're seeing big institutions involved with these candles. You know, they're supposed to be institutionally funded. So when we're seeing this, you don't want to see price linger around your candles. You, you know, think of these candlesticks, these demand zones, like a hot area, right? If you're touching a hot stove, well, you're not going to leave your finger on a hot stove, are you? You're going to tap it, ah, get away because it's hot. And that's how these levels should be. They should be hot and they should be ready. And again, this is actually the bottom, you know, Bitcoin at 3K, <laughs> 3.6K. And obviously we rallied to new all-time highs from there. And again, this works on everything. You can work, work on crypto. This can work on Forex. Anything you want on any time frame. It doesn't have to be just, you know, the higher time frames. If you're going to be more of a scalper or intraday trader, you can also do that. Let's look for another formation. And this formation, we're going to be looking for the rally, the base, 
and then another rally again these are continuation plays you do want to add a little bit more confirmation on these trades or maybe even lower your risk um, because they are continuations but what can we see here we can see our rally our doji which is our base then another rally from there now we can see a significant move so this is a demand zone so again we mark up our proximal we mark up our distal which is our invalidation and we can also mark up our median halfway point and simply just wait for price to trade back into this price trades in again we're still in a trade because our distal line is this low and this is where our, obviously our stop loss would be and again i know this is on a monthly time frame um but this could be the same thing on a one minute time frame or a one second time frame it doesn't matter it could be any single time frame guys you can trade the weekly the same you can trade the one minute it doesn't matter it's all the same thing and we can see we have a very nice reaction from there okay so we're now going to look for the next formations where we can see we have this example is going to be the rally the base and then the drop now again you're going to see these examples absolutely everywhere once you train your eye to see it so let's go and find one so we can see it here we have a rally base and a drop so now with this rally base drop we can mark up our proximal line like this now in situations like this where you see a larger wick above your doji this is where it's subjective and down to you in your data collection how you want to play this you know if i want to be aggressive then okay we can play like this and with this you know the stop loss above the doji candle and again in some situations it does work out for example in this situation we can see it does hold now if you're feeling a little bit more conservative again you can place your stop loss above you know the overall wick if you want to be a little bit more risk adverse um, and again we can see we have a very substantial move to the downside from this supply zone and it's funny guys all the market is doing is going from supply to demand supply to demand look where this trades into this trades into a drop base drop right this is that next formation we're going to look at now i didn't even plan this actually we can see we have a drop we have our base now in situations where you see a couple bases what i like to use is use again the most voluminous base so we can see here we have this larger doji so we can use this doji and we can also encapsulate the higher doji as well because this is areas of essentially redistribution of more supply so and again if we just switch the time frame See now on the eight hour time frame, those two candles are the same time, the same candlestick. So all we've done now is we just encapsulated the whole drop base drop. And this is why sometimes you have to switch time frames so you can find the cleanest sort of institutional candle. That would have been your entry tagged in. And we had a very substantial drop to the downside from there. So guys, that's it for today's video. I know we didn't go through a lot of examples, but the main thing, what we went through now is enough. And this is enough to train your eye. What you, what you need to do now is apply it. Again, you can't sit here and binge watch these videos all day, family. I mean, of course, there's a lot of source, but the real source is an application. Just do it. Make your dreams come true. Just do it. But yeah, guys, make sure you go in and apply in the stuff. Backtest it. See it. Do it. Over and over and over and over again. Do it. Because once you see it, once you train your eyes, and once you have you know, the correct rules, you're going to be able to see this everywhere. And the main thing again, guys, is cause and effect. You want to see these levels invalidate prior levels of supply or demand. If you're looking at your bearish scenarios, you want to see them invalidate bullish scenarios. If you're seeing bullish scenarios, you want to see them invalidate bearish scenarios. That's the main thing is that element of cause and effect. And this is stuff a lot of stuff a lot of people won't teach you about. With that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm super, super, super excited to have shared this information with you. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to comment. Um, ask me them if you have any video suggestions things you'd like to see again more than happy to take them on board and again if you guys do want mentorship you guys do want to connect um feel free to message me on my instagram do it um, this is my only instagram account very specific with the details i k d a v i s there's a lot of fake accounts going around so make sure guys this is my only account feel free to reach out if you want access to that mentorship program and don't forget to comment like and subscribe and i'll see you guys on the charts and i'll also see you guys at the top from the top because the bottom is way too crowded sheesh get to the point where anyone else would quit and you're not gonna stop there no what are you waiting for do it just do it yes you can